So the traditional way that most people think about agents is the Jerry Maguire way where you represent professional athletes. And mm-hmm. for football, you will get 3%. Um, for basketball, you will get 4%. And, uh, but now the, the game has changed with the new name, image, and likeness law that took place July 1st, where now student athletes, about 500,000 student athletes everywhere, now can get paid off of their name, image, and likeness. And why that's big, because now the percentages went from 3 to 4% to now it's 10 to 20%. What's up, everybody? It's Jamel Gibbs. Welcome to another podcast episode. This is the Business and Investing Podcast, where you learn all things business and investing related. Today, we're going to talk about something that is pretty unique in business within itself. Not a lot of people doing it. I got to say that. Uh, It's not real estate investing related, but it's business related. And it's a hustle, just like anything else. And and that's what we do here. We hustle to be able to create uh, income, active income, and ultimately create that passive income from that active income that that we make. And uh, this particular hustle is something that if you're if you're a sports fanatic, you're definitely going to love it. It's, it's definitely a hustle that at the end of the day can pay you very, very well. There's agents making millions and millions of dollars doing this. Um, and our special guest is no exception to uh, what we're going to talk about. So without further ado, my man, Ed Davis, what's going on, my man? Hey, what's going on, man? I just want to say thanks for inviting me on the show, man. I'm, I look forward to the conversation. Oh, man, it's going to be it's going to be a pleasure. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, mm-hmm. At the end of the day, this is something, you know, I, I haven't particularly looked into myself, but I know there's a lot of money to be made, especially actively. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and then on top of that, there's other benefits. You get to meet certain uh, some of your favorite players and things like that. But let's talk about how to become a sports agent and make money doing it, how anybody can do it. I know you got a, a, a program out on it, man, but I really wanted to dive into that a little bit and, and give our listeners a step-by-step process on how they can go from where they are uh, to creating some type of income doing that. But first, man, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself, bro? Okay, so my name is, uh, again, Edward Davis. I'm born and raised in Stone Mountain, Georgia, which is about 15 minutes east of Atlanta. I uh, played football at Virginia State University for a couple of years. I was a quarterback up there for a while. Then I really started to realize, like, hey, man, I may not make it to the league. So I had to pivot. Um, it was either be a football coach or be a, a sports agent. Um, you know, with all the nepotism in sports, I realized that going the agent route was probably going to be the best bet for me. Mm. So uh, I went down that path. It was, as you can imagine, it was difficult. Uh, getting going as far as, you know, not fitting the status quo and, you know, the, the stereotypes and stuff like that. But eventually I was able to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, as you say, I'm a hustler in, in, in a good sense. You know, sometimes it has a bad, a bad stigma to it, but, you know, I, I just, I persevered. I started Checkmate Sports in 2018, um, got licensed in 2019. And um, in our first year, we was able to get two guys, uh, I'm into the league and uh, it was crazy because we did it, you know, in the middle of 2020. So it was a worldwide pandemic. Um, both of my guys, Travis Reed, he ended up going to the Indianapolis Colts. Christian Angelo from Hampton University, he ended up going to uh, the New York Giants. So we was able to do that in a worldwide pandemic. So, you know, these guys didn't have a pro day because it got canceled due to COVID. Um, they weren't invited to the senior bowl or the combine because they was unranked, but we were still able to get them into the league on, on draft day uh, with no law degree, no inside connections, no million dollar bankroll. We just, you know, just did it. So, uh, you know, uh, after that, you know, it, that was a learning lesson. You know, it was, I mean, it was, it was, uh, it was amazing to do. Um, but in hindsight, there was a lot of things that I would have done differently, which is why I said, you know, know what i wanted to create a program to teach people like me um who who want to get into the industry but may not have you know the the nepotism in their favor may not have politics or may not have a a best friend that's going in the first round of the draft that could you know bring them in so i said you know what let me create something for people like that and that's how the uh sports agent master class was was created that's dope man so there's obviously you know a lot of moving parts to becoming a sports agent man what do what do you feel are some of the benefits the, let's talk about the pros and cons of becoming a sports agent. Okay, we'll start with let's start with the cons. 
Um, I think some of the cons is just, it just depends. It's first the, the thing you have to realize is a lot of people in the sports industry are 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 egomaniacs. You know, they 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 wanted to be the quarterback for the Falcons. They wanted to be the guy, you know, wherever it didn't work. So they had to pivot. And they're, you know, what I realized is I say that to say a lot of uh, the help. You know, me, I, I include myself, the publicists, the agents, the finance. They're more Hollywood than the actual talent, the players. And so when you're trying to enter into that industry and you're dealing with these guys at the senior bowls, at the draft, you start running into different personalities and you're like, wow, like, you know, you would have thought the first round draft pick was going to be like this. And it's, it's not. It's the it's the, you know, the help. Um, so you deal with that. Um, also, the parents. You know, a lot of times the parents, um, a lot of these players where, you you know, you, you realize, like, why are they doing this or why are they in that situation? A lot of times it's not the, the player, it's the it's the parents mm-hmm. or it's the people close to them. So it's a lot of things that you see when you, when you get into the industry and you pull the curtains back and you start to see, you know, why things are the way they are. You know, why this player get drafted this way or this this player got cut today? You know, why? And from the outside looking in, you know, it's 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 a tragedy or it's, you know, it's racism or it's this or that. And then if you're on the inside, you start to realize, no, this guy has a terrible work ethic. This guy was really, really good at this point, but had a terrible attitude. His talent declined. Now he just has the attitude. <laughs> so we don't want to deal with that. So it's just a lot of stuff that, you, you, you start to see once you get on the inside that may be uh, it's kind of eye opening. But I mean, if you watch Ballers, you watch Jerry Maguire, you watch Entourage, they kind of hint at it, you know. So it's one thing to see it in TV and then see it in real life. Mm. And um, how, how about some of the pros? The pros is, you know, um, you enjoy what you do. I say all that to say at the end of the day, when you have your highs, it far outweighs the lows. You know, when you have that high, it's like, this is what I do it for. You know, this, you know, I, and to be honest, man, I, 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 I haven't played in the professional level, so I, I don't know. But when I got those guys drafted, uh, not they didn't get drafted, but when they got signed on draft day, it was one of the best feelings I ever had. And it was, it was so fulfilling, you know, to really, um, to love what I do, you know, to wake up and to go do my job and, it's not like, oh, man, I got to do this again. You know, it, it, it felt good, you know, just to travel and go to different games and, and not just be for fun, but it be, you know, for business. And um, just the difference that you're able to make, you know, the type of generational wealth we're, we're able to yeah. make um, doing this. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. I'm going to tell you this, man. You know, that sounds similar to, to me. People, you know, I've made a lot of money in real estate over the last 19, 20 years. And people are like, you know, why do you have coaching programs? Why do you do this and why do you do that? It's the fulfillment of seeing somebody else, knowing that I was able to help somebody else win Mm -hmm. um, and change their entire life. That's fulfilling for me, man. So I I get when you say, you know, you you help somebody, you know, get signed, for example, Mm -hmm. right? That's changing their life Mm -hmm. in a sense, right? And it's going to also help help your situation too, man. But um, you get that sense of... uh, satisfaction that allows you to 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 really enjoy uh what you do man you know definitely appreciate that man so what what are some of the obstacles that people will face getting started in this type of industry like i said mentioned it's the gatekeepers that's the thing that's the first thing you're going to have to deal with you know a lot of people know sports agents but none of them yeah it's funny they always oh yeah i know this agent i know this guy Okay, well, did you get an internship? No, I can't. They won't even give me a phone call, you know, because it's a cutthroat industry. So a lot of the agents who there, you know, they just happen to be there, you know, and they don't want you, you know, coming in, stepping on their toes, taking time, especially if they think you're a threat. You know, that's the worst you can do because I interned for a couple of agents and I was hungry and I was, you know, hitting them, hitting the pavement. And once they start to see that, they start to see, okay. This person is a threat. And then they they bird feed you. You know, they 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 make you do Microsoft Excel. Yeah. They, you know, they they have you do stuff like that. They don't they don't let you go to the games, they don't introduce you to the talent. So it's the it's the gatekeepers, which is why you know what we was able to do our first year was um it showed a lot about the grit that we have in 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 you know how we do things. Yeah, man. 
Yeah, definitely. You know, I I get it, man. You know, it's kind of like when you're in a real estate industry and, you know, for example, you know, I might be doing really well in a particular area or let me give you a better example. When I first started in the real estate industry, I was a threat because I was aggressive. Right. And I came in swinging. Right. And when other investors saw that and I would ask them for help, they really didn't want to help me. So I had to figure it all out on my own, man. So I, I get it. You know what I mean? So that's obviously an obstacle that the average person is going to face, but that's definitely an obstacle that could be overcome mm -hmm. as well. What about a mindset shift? Because most people, honestly, let, you know, just sitting here talking to a lot of different business people, mm -hmm. the average person doesn't, they don't think like the entrepreneur, mm -hmm. right? The entrepreneur has a different, a different type of brain. Right. You know, uh, what, what, what's the mindset shift that people have to make in order to be able to get into a business like this? I think the first thing you have to realize is that everybody's afraid. From the guy who made 160 million to the guy who doesn't have any clients, everybody's afraid. Mm. The difference is they do it, you know, and then and, and the funny thing, and I can say this, this is this is um, real about the, the agent world. It's um, the guy who makes 160 million and the guy is not too much different in the, in, in, the, in the realm of talent. It's just the relationship. It was, you know, uh, it was a timing. You get it. So my point is, it's like you don't have to be a superstar. You don't have to be a rock star. You know, when I first got into the industry, I was meeting these guys that I see on TV at the combine. And I'm like, oh, man, this is he's so and so agent. I got I just want to pick his brain. I just let me sit next to him. He's going to say something that's really going to, you know, wow me. And then I sit next to him and I, you know, I talk and I say, wow, I'm not <laughs> impressed, you know, and I, mm. and, and I thought it was just me. And I was like, okay, well, let me talk to some other agents. And, and I started to realize, I said, wow, this isn't built on talent. This is this built on relationship business. Yeah, this built on the good old boy network. This built on, you know, I'm so and so son. You know, this isn't, you know, I know how to negotiate better than you, or I can recruit better than you, you know. And then once I saw that, that's that kind of gave me the confidence to start checkmate. I said, okay, well, you know, this is this is interesting. And it's funny, you know, you're you're in the real estate. That's how I got my first start. Um, I actually bought my first house at uh was it 24? Uh, I bought my first house at 24 and I house hacked it, had a couple of my buddies move in and I stayed in the spare room, you know, took the rent from them, you know, paid the mortgage and then was just stacking my money up playing fantasy football. And then once I got my money up, I ended up using that money to start checkmate sports. Yeah, man. So like you said, man, you know, at the end of the day, it's not about there's a there's an old saying, man, it's not about what you know, it's who you know. And that's the type of business. But can that be overcome? Like if the average person walked in today, listening to this podcast, as a matter of fact, the average person listening to this right now wanted to start this business, would it be difficult for them to do it? Uh, it's going to be, it's, it's, it, and, and I hate to say it because this is a shameless plug, <laughs> but it is difficult. It really is difficult to do it without help because like you said, it's not just about what, who you know, but it's who knows you. Mm. And if you're trying to do this alone, especially if you don't, if you're not, you know, if you don't fit what people think the traditional agent looks like, you got to deal with nepotism. You got to deal with uh, uh, stereotypes from your own people, mm -hmm. you know, and then if you don't have the resources, it's, it's difficult. But that's why I created the Sports Agent Masterclass, because I realized that um, the industry is changing, you know, back in the 80s, the 90s, the early 2000s, the Jerry Maguire days. People wanted white agents. They wanted white advisors. They want, you know, white people around them, you know, but now, you know, not sure you guys pay attention, but in the past couple of drafts, majority of the first round picks in the NFL went to black agents or, or agents of color. You know, mm -hmm. um, not only are men, black men dominated, but there's black women um, and, and Caucasian women. And basically I'm saying this, it's a lot of diversity in the industry. You know, it's, it's not. Becoming yeah, you know, becoming like more I diverse. Now with dreads and tattoos and, and I'm not, you know, it's, as long as my presentation is together, I'm not, you know, I'm actually the cool thing. And it's, and it's getting to the point now where back in the day, you couldn't get a position as a black male or black woman unless your best friend or your cousin was a first round draft pick. 
You know, mm. now a lot of the agencies are getting smart. They say, you know, OK, well, we'll just we'll just hire them. Yeah. You know? So now it's a lot of black agents who work for, you know, white firms. There's a there's a lot of similarities, man, in, in, in the real estate industry, as well as the uh, the, the sports agents, sports agent industry as well, man. You know, when I first started in the real estate business talking 20 years ago, um, there wasn't a lot of diversity either, man. And, you know, I grew up in the projects. You know, somebody like me um, coming in off the streets, it was difficult for me to get the, the real help that I needed. I had a, a handful of people that kind of supported me along the way, mm -hmm. um, but it became more diversified later on. Like the last five years, maybe five to six years, I want to say the industry definitely diversified. We see more of all cultures. We see more of women and uh, men doing this. Just a lot of diversity, man. And uh, I, I feel like when I when I first started educating real estate investors on how to do it, I was like one of the first ones outside of a couple other guys that I know, one of the first ones bringing kind of a hip hop culture to to the education space uh, based off of where I came from. You know, mm -hmm. um, so it's just a lot of diversity. I love it. I think people appreciate it all in, in all cultures at this point. And I think people like the fact that uh, it's becoming easier for anybody to make money doing whatever you want to do, especially with that millennial and that new generation swag, man. It's just, it's you know, people don't want to be with a shirt and tie on all the time sitting in the office, man, in a cubicle. Man. Uh, there's so much more money outside of that being in the field and the sports uh, arena. There's, there's obviously no exception to it, man. So. Why don't we provide our listeners with a with a step by step process? Let's say three to five steps on some things that they can do to go from where they are to where they want to go, uh, getting started in this business. In the in the sports agent world, mm -hmm. um, three steps. The first thing I would do if I was to start over is just three steps: um, establish relationships with the right people. You know, um, try to, you know, get with the, the, the right people, um, get next to the right people, mm -hmm. uh, whether that's, you know, and, and I was focused more so on the talent, you know, because talent trumps all, you know, if you got it, Rich Paul, you know, I mean, that he, he's a, James, he, man. <laughs> a lot of people say, you know, Rich Paul just made it because a lot of LeBron Jack, which is true. That's that's not rocket science. But Le, Rich Paul is a genius because he positioned himself. He changed the game. To do it. A lot of people are best friends with, with, with good athletes, but they don't position themselves to, to leverage it, you know, and, and, and to make the most of it. So mm. uh, I think, you know, what he did was a, was a good example. Um, and I think LeBron James is an outstanding athlete, um, you know, probably the greatest of all time off the court in, in, in just in life, just of how he moves and, and, and position them because it's a lot of athletes who don't position their friends. Yeah, I love you know? that, man. I love the fact that you mentioned that LeBron is definitely, you know, I was talking to my, 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 my friend Antonio about this a couple of days ago. We were just talking about Rich Paul, man, and how LeBron put his boys on, man. Yeah. You know, he didn't have to. You know, most athletes, I don't think any athlete ever done that before. They're not doing it. I'm they're telling not, LeBron, I'm not, they're not yeah. doing it. He's, he, you know, I, there's a debate between him and MJ as far as on the court, but off the court, I think LeBron is definitely a GOAT in that, in that, uh, in that respect yeah. and in that regard. Yep. Yep. Put his and boys I, on, man. Yeah, man. And he, and, he, and he, he puts them on with, like, he put it on like they, like, he, like, what I like about it, because some people do it like, oh, here you go. He put it on like, yo, come on. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I just like that they humble themselves and because they take events. Because sometimes it's players who put friends on, but they feel entitled. Mm -hmm. So they don't really maximize. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they'll be the manager, but they're not really bringing any value to it. You know, these guys, it was it was a mutual relationship. Yep. They gave them the opportunity. They put in the work. And I love that. I love yeah, that. Man. They put yeah. in that work. So establish the relationship would be mm -hmm. step number one. What if you don't have relationships, though? Like, how do you meet some of these guys? Uh, well, social media, everything is in your pocket. Mm -hmm. Everybody like you want to know in the world is in your pocket. You know, and that's that's what we do at our program. We show people how to market themselves as agents. 
Um, then that's how I got started. I didn't know anybody. Mm. I, you know, I, I thought my brother was going to be a top player, but unfortunately, life happens. Mm. It didn't work out for him. You know, he's still trying to figure out right now. So I said, you know what? I got to make something happen. How do I make this happen? And I use social media. I use, you know, you know, uh, 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 what we call checkmate marketing to establish our brand um, and, and kind of cut through some of the noise in the industry. And that's how we were able to, you know, become successful. Got it. Uh, got it. So let me, I would let, say that. Let me put that in layman's terms for everybody listening. So when you first start in the real estate industry, for example, right? You don't know anybody. What do you do? The first thing you do is go out, you network. So you join these different clubs. You got social media, Facebook groups, all kinds of places you could go from not knowing anything to knowing just a little bit and getting more information and meeting the right people that can kind of guide you in the right direction. That's exactly what you want to do. Establish relationships first. Very, mm-hmm. very important, man. How about step number two? What would you do once you got the relationships? Build credibility. Mm. I'm writing this down. Build credibility. Credibility. Yeah, because at the end of the day, people don't care about, you know, what you know or, you know, what your credentials are or who you know if they don't think you can get the job done. I like that, man. So how do you build credibility when you have none or no clients in the industry? How do you do that? You know, that uh, a good way. And this is one of my secrets uh, I, I, I drop on here. Um, you just have to be one chapter ahead, you know. So, you know, figure out something, you know, if that's real estate, that's stocks, that's being an agent, things like that. You know, you have, first you have to become a student, you know. So like I have this book right here. I'm sure you heard of it. Never split the difference. By oh, Kirk Boss. Yeah. Uh, a little plug for him. But diff- you have to read stuff. You have to become a, a student of your craft. And then from there, then you go out and then you report on what you learned. And, you know, that starts to show people like, OK, this person knows what they're talking about. Mm hmm. One way to do it with uh, real estate and, and, and it probably and you could correct me if I'm wrong, it'll probably work in that industry as well. I'm not an expert in your industry at all, man. But um, you can partner with people, bring on a partner, build your clientele, who, someone who has existing clients already, create some type of income with them first. And then now their credibility becomes your credibility until you build up your clientele. Uh, you get a few, let's say a few wholesale deals in, in the real estate business, then you kind of go your own way with it. Right. So uh, yeah. I know as a, you know, when I was uh, we're talking, you know, 20 years ago, when I first became an agent, we, I, my credibility came off of the broker. When I, when I became a, a real estate agent, the broker's credibility became my credibility at that point. Right. So it's the same exact thing when you're in real estate business, whether you're doing a, a sports agency or whatever the case may be, you can build off of other people's credibility. But if you establish the relationships first, then the credibility is going to come anyway, primarily because you just established a strong relationship. Now you can go back and say, well, I'm currently doing business with a couple of guys in the industry. You don't even have to mention their names. I'm not sure how that goes in the industry, but I mean, how do you feel about all of that, man? I yeah, that's that's exactly how um, our program was built because it allows people to come in. They can leverage our name, leverage our credibility, you know, learn our system, and then mm-hmm. if they want, they can start their own agency because it's built for people who want to start their own business. But we have some people who come in and say, "Hey, man, I like what you guys built. I like the culture. I want to rock with you guys at Checkmate Sports," and that's mm-hmm. what we, you know, we help people to do. Um, and that I, I feel like that is the easiest way to do it because if you want to build credibility, it takes time. That's right. A lot of people don't have that time, you mm-hmm. know. Um, if you, you know, and, and and to be honest, that's why people think you need to go to law school because if you become a lawyer, you automatically have it built into your, you know, the credentials. But the thing about law school, it doesn't teach you how to recruit. It right. doesn't teach you, you know, how to become Real life stuff. Yeah, because it's 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 you're it's teaching how to be, you know, become a, a, ter- a defense attorney or things like that. But a lot of the agent stuff you learn on the job. Right. You know, and you can do that without spending six figures to do it in law school, which is what we, we, we teach people to do. Got it, man. So what would be step number three, bro? 
that was and I was really trying to think about that just now. So we got established relationships. You want to build credibility. Once you build credibility, what would you do next? Uh, I would I just to be honest with you guys, you have to have you have to have resources. Resources. Yeah. Now either you can get that from the relationship. So it's different ways you can do it. You can leverage it from a relationship with an investor or somebody like that. Or, you know, you can stack up, you know, a couple of years like I did, but you got to have money in this, you know, and, and, and not to knock your industry because I always, people always call me, you know, one to become agent. I'm like, look, man, this isn't wholesale real estate. You know, <laughs> you got to invest some money into yeah, it. This isn't, it. This isn't the starter level investment. You know, this is, this is after you got a couple of properties, you, you, you're doing your, you're doing your thing in one industry and you want to pivot and do something you really passionate about. Then you come over here because it's going to just to be honest with you, you know, just to travel up and down the highways, you know, yeah. going things like that. It, it requires um, capital. So what type of capital would somebody need in order to start this type of business up? It all depends on it's just the, the, I, how the scale you want to do it. At. Do you want to represent a first round draft pick? That, that may be six figures. Do you want to represent an undrafted guy or, you know, somebody like that? That could be free, you know, uh, but it just enabled able to move around and able to in, in order. I'm sorry. In order to build that credibility to move around, you're going to have resources. I mean, you're yeah. going to have to have some resources. So I think that is the, the you know, the, the three steps uh, to doing it. And you don't have to be a millionaire, but you have to have some disposable income. Just remember this. Everybody started off somewhere. So mm-hmm. start where you are, right? Whether that's building up your credit to be able to do it. Maybe you got to do with some more real estate deals, cash up to be able to, uh, jo- you know, really take advantage of this play. Right. But the whole point is you really want to, you, you want to start where you are and build from there. Right. So you got to, you know, maybe you build up your credit lines, Mm-hmm. To be able to have enough capital to be able to jump in, maybe you take on partners like we we already spoke about people who have capital already, mm-hmm. right? Uh, maybe you find a way to get in, you know, establishing the relationships so that you can negotiate a big deal and maybe get get a percentage off of that. Speaking of which, man, what's the percentages like in this type of uh, industry, man? So the cool thing about, and I didn't mention this, but the industry's changing. So the traditional way that most people think about agents is the Jeremy Wire way where you represent professional athletes. And mm-hmm. for football, you will get 3%. Um, for basketball, you will get 4%. And, uh, but now the, the game has changed with the new name, image, and likeness law that took place July 1st, where now student athletes, about 500,000 student athletes everywhere, now can get paid off of their name, image, and likeness. And why that's big, because now the percentages went from 3 to 4% to now it's 10 to 20%. Whoa. And if you're representing a, you know, just think about it, if you, yeah, you get a LeBron James on there, boy, which is probably yeah, going to be unlikely. But you talking about a hundred, you get a hundred million dollar contract. That's that's changing the game for you. Bingo. And the cool thing about it is you can do that without having to go to law school. Mm-hmm. You know, we got people. We had a guy named John Blunt. He went through our program. Uh, he signed up June 6th. We got him licensed by June, I think it was the, the 21st. And then July 1st, he signed the first NIL deal in the state of Kentucky for his uh, his very own son. Wow. Yeah. And, um, you know, like that, that, that right there is changing the game. So um, if a lot, of, and you know what, now that I think about it, that is the, uh, uh, the route that people should do become a sports marketing agent. Um, and, and, and we talk about that, you know, in our class, but that is the, you know, we call that a secret agent. It's kind of like a wholesaler, you know, mm-hmm. where you're able to maneuver deals without having a license and things like that. Um, but that's, it's, it's a, it's a hack and it's, it's a loophole that, that, that's opened up. Now, the thing about it is we don't know how long this loophole is going to last, mm-hmm. you know, cause a lot of times when we start doing stuff and we, you know, we take advantage of it, they, they, you know, people, certain people move it. So as of right now, though, the loophole is open and people are are cashing in. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. So listen, we we spoke a lot about, you know, getting started in the sports uh, arena. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you believe that anybody can do this? 
I believe anybody can do it. I believe anybody can do, a, you know, anything, but it's just how bad do you want it? Mm, powerful, man. Powerful yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's the question. How bad do you want it? You know, uh, that's the question. How bad do you want it? And you feel like this is a hustle that, you know, anybody on any capital level can can get into. Um, you feel like it's, it, it's one of those hacks that you could get into to really be able to change your life at the end of the day, right? Honestly speaking, and and I just say that technically anybody can do anything. If you know the right person, you of can, course, you get it. But the, the to be an agent, man, it takes a it takes a, a person who is uh you know you gotta want to do it. You gotta have grit, man. Yeah, you know For this, sure. This uh, and, and I say this, you know, as a, you know, you can't just jump in here thinking, you know, people, you know, last year, Scott Boris made one hundred and sixty million dollars mm-hmm. in a pandemic. Um, uh, Forbes said that Rich Paul made forty five million. OK, and, and Rich Paul was like number nine on the list. You know, there was guys making. Uh, He's one of the guys. best in the industry, man. Yeah. And he you know, that we know, but this guy's is making more than him, mm-hmm. you know, Um but they're not going to just let people come in just, you know, uh, just because, you know, just because you saw Jerry Maguire, you know, you got to really have that grit that you really got to say, you gotta know what, do it. you got to want to do it. And that's yeah. with anything where you can make a lot of money. That's with being an actor, real estate, you know, let uh, me tell you this, everything. So real estate is a perfect example of what you just said, man. A lot of people come into the, you know, there's a reason why you have a 1% crowd and a 99% crowd, right? one percent of the people want to actually do it and they make most if not all of the money in the business 99 percent of the people are onlookers they never actually get started they buy courses they become shelf help instead of self-help right they don't use the information they you know not you know taking anything away from information my podcast i got courses and all kinds of stuff right you got information but chances of somebody doing something with the information on on these free podcasts on YouTube and, uh, you know, uh, the courses that they buy are slim to none. Unfortunately, that's just the nature of the beast, man. It's the 1%, probably more like a 5%, right? That's actually going to do something with it. Uh, and it's just unfortunate. So it really is how bad do you, do you want it at the yep. end of the day, man? So we spoke about a lot, man. How, how can our listeners get in contact with you? Uh, obviously, we spoke about your course. I'm going to leave a link in the description box to the course if you guys want to check it out uh, to take advantage of this to get started. Um, this is definitely a fresh industry. Not not a lot of people, although there there is obviously it's been around for a long time. Believe it or not, there's not a lot of people doing it. And uh, that leaves the door open for somebody like you watching this uh, this podcast or listening to this podcast to be able to really get in. And really make some of the big bucks, especially being at the uh, the the uh, stakes went up to ten to twenty percent at this point. So, how can our listeners get in contact with you? So um, they can reach out to me on Instagram. My my handle is uh, call my agent underscore. It's C A L L M Y A G E N T underscore. Um, and then you can uh, check out the site. It's uh, sportsagentmasterclass dot com. Sports agent. Um, masterclass.com i'm gonna make sure i link all of that in the description box for you uh also i'm gonna link your instagram now i'm, I'm writing this stuff down my microphone is in the way <laughs> okay, but uh yeah so sp- call my agent underscore on instagram or mm-hmm. sports agent masterclass is it yeah on, sports uh, agent masterclass.com that's dot com the, yeah that's website and if they want to hit me up on instagram it's call my agent underscore Sounds good, man. Sounds good. So with, with that being said, man, we, we recommended the book, uh, Never Split the Difference. Uh, are there any other books that you would recommend besides that one? Like, what's your favorite business book of all time at this point? You know what? It, 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 it's cliche. Everybody says it. But uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Rich Dad, I mean, Poor Dad. I'm sure. But you know what a lot of people don't say? Cash Flow Quadrant is actually better than Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I believe that too, man. I believe yeah. it too. Oh, I actually got started in business off a of rich dad, but my favorite of his books is Cash Flow Quadrant, man. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that was the first book I read, That and Who Moved My Cheese. Um, I read that 11 years ago, 2010. 
And um, I remember because I was actually my economics teacher in high school told me to read that book and I never read it. And I wish I would have read it, you know, because I would have been a little bit ahead. But uh, yeah, the, I think that's a good book to, to start with. Absolutely, man. Now, obviously, there's a lot that we could cover on this. I'm sure your, your program is going to cover a lot of it, man. So uh, what advice, what will be some last words? What advice would you give to our listeners getting started in the uh, sports business? I always try to drop the mic and leave it and it has something really good to say, but I think um, something that, 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 you know, sticks with me is, you know, don't be afraid to be great. You know, don't be afraid to be successful. Don't be afraid to be rich. Don't be afraid to, to make a lot of money. You know, a lot, a lot of times it's our environment, you know, it's just our environment where people, you know, they, and I hate to say it like this, but a lot of people don't want to see you doing better than them. Mm. You know, they want you to win, but don't do better than them, you know, and the moment you start to do better than them or you try to do better, better than them and you bring it to them and they start to know they might bring you down, you know, and you might start having that uh, was the imposter syndrome or you might think, oh, man, maybe I can't do this. Maybe it isn't for me, you know, and it is, you know, and then once you start getting on that other side, you start to realize like, wow. It is. I remember I remember, you know, growing up, I always wanted to hit six figures. That was the that was the goal. Hit six figures. I did that years ago. And once I got there, I realized that's not enough. <laughs> that's not an, it's not enough. You know, I don't, I don't know where you live, but in Atlanta, especially in Atlanta, this black Hollywood, 100, you know, 100,000 is just you're just entering the, the arena. You're not mm. even you know, on the bench at that point. But. Um, I just realized once you start getting around millionaires and people who are really making, you start to realize like, man, I was, I was playing, you know, small ball, you know, and it all starts, in, in, you know, in, in believing in yourself. So I think that is the the first thing, you know, want to be great and, and go out and do it. Don't stop till you get there. That's it, man. You know, that, that reminded me of uh, a verse that Jay-Z had years ago, man. He said, I remember when I first came in, I want a paper like Puff. And then I realized puff paper wasn't enough. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, so right, you you, right. you know, it sounded just like when you said, you know, um, you know, I wanted I wanted to make a hundred thousand. I realized it wasn't enough. It's you not. Know, so, I mean, it's not. You know, it's, it's selfish, really. You know, because you can only serve yourself. You can't help your family with that. Yeah. You yeah. know, and, and to be able to really do some things, you gotta you gotta you know raise the stakes. And, and and to be honest with you, man, at the end of the day, uh, before we close this thing out, man, um, at the end of the day, you know, by people not taking action, you know, I, we, we put a lot of information out. There's guys like you, guys like me, you know, we put information out there for people to go ahead and invest into themselves or take it for free, right? Whatever the play is. The people who listen to this stuff but don't take action are being selfish because at the end of the day, man, think about all of the people you could help by t changing your six, your situation, your life, right? So if you change your circumstances, how many other people is it going to affect your family, your friends, all of the people around you, right? In your case, the, the athletes, in my case, the, the property sellers. Mm -hmm. So you get to help so many people by just taking action. It's a selfless act by taking action. Mm -hmm. When you don't take action, you're thinking about yourself. Mm -hmm. Let that sink in. Mm -hmm. Listen, guys, this has been a great podcast. Listen, I would love to have you back. Maybe we could do a Q&A next time, man, and uh, answer some questions for, for those of you who, re who really want to get started in this industry. And I'm looking forward to, to having you back, Ed, man, to, to, to discuss yeah, other, other details of the business. I, I, I enjoy myself and uh, thanks for having me, man. I definitely be back. I, I enjoy the vibe. I like the energy and I like what you're doing. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. But listen, guys, go ahead. Make sure you tell everybody about this, uh, this training program that Ed has. I'm going to leave the link in the description box. Share this uh, podcast, this video. Like this video. Subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell. And I'm going to see y'all on the next one. Peace.